Right, so, so o ofatumumab is a, um, a new generation anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody that um, in the laboratories looks like it has enhanced activity over rituximab and it was approved for refractory, um, for patients with re refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Um, we know that most drugs that we use are better off in the front line than given them when, when other things are failing. This, this is also has to be kept in the context that in older patients, there's really no one good therapy for, for patients really above 65 or 70. Um, some of the fludarabine trials um, showed, did not show an advantage in, those, in that patient population where fludarabine given in younger patients, especially in combination, is a very effective of, of it. So we are seeking to, to develop a, um, a well-tolerated um, effective therapy for, for older patients. Um, I must say, and my colleague John Hainsworth, about a decade ago um, at Sarah Cannon, conducted a trial in this very same patient population with rituximab, and he showed in with rituximab it was well tolerated, though the, the response rate was about half of patients and the progression-free survival was about 60% uh, at, at one year, and we were hoping to improve upon that. And so we conducted this, um, this uh, trial with, with ofatumumab was given a stepped-up fashion um, initially, um, the, the, the doses were um, 2,000 milligrams um, after an, a first dose of 300 milligrams, and that was given um, given weekly until they um, until they reached a maintenance phase. Um, that was given weekly for eight weeks, and then there was an evaluation, and then those patients that were responding or at least had stable disease could go on to receive maintenance therapy with ofatumumab every every eight weeks for up to two years, um, and that was that was the original trial, and we had. Um, we had some interesting results. I mean, I think that the, the, um, the, the overall response rate um, was high. When we looked at the response rates using the new criteria for compared to the criteria that the, old, the antibodies in the past were all judged by, it jumped up a lot. So we were seeing, you know, approximately 80% overall response rate when we used the same criteria that all the other antibodies were judged by in the past. Um, so, so that that was an interesting um, that was an interesting finding, and then we then there was also this notion that well maybe we don't have to give so much um, ofatumumab. I mean, you know, maybe just maybe we could back down on that dose. There's still a lot of questions about what the right dose is. So we we accrued a second cohort. Um, the first cohort was 44 patients, with a second cohort of a little bit more than 30 patients, and we used a thousand milligrams in that very same um, design. The interesting finding to me was that um, that that there was a decrease um, in response rate. Now you have to you have to take this with a little bit of a grain of salt because these patients were older. So th this was the median age was 75 in that second cohort. The um, they had more high risk uh, cytogenetics. There was a patient that was 93 years old. So so we certainly did not cherry pick uh, the, the patient population. This is a very real world older patient population. The first cohort. Was was um, the median age was about you know, six years or so younger, and so um, so that they're not a completely the same. But the outcome did look like it was better with the higher dose. And well, the thing I think is interesting about this is this is a good regimen for people, but it's going to serve as the backbone for future trials um, from, through Sarah Cannon for um, for this patient population. We're planning on um, about to open a new trial with combining this this backbone with lenalidomide. Uh, we'd love to. Um, subsequent do trials with one of the new B cell receptor pathway molecules um, which don't have all the same toxicities that we see with uh, see with regular chemotherapy. So this was one of the most popular trials um, I've ever conducted because um, the treating physicians um, and the patients really especially in this age group just do not want to receive uh, any kind of standard chemotherapy and and so uh, accrual was brisk, very brisk. In, in fact, the, probably the fastest accrual of any clinical trial I've ever conducted in my career.